Okay, in terms of our, our log graphs, again, the key difference if you think about each one is just the base that we're graphing. So log base 2, steeper and higher. Uh, log base 10 is a lot flatter. And the other one here that we haven't really seen before, that's log base E, which we introduce a little bit more next year. E itself is just a number, a bit like pi. I think it's 7.41 actually, can't remember actually. So it's 2.7, so it just behaves a little bit between 2 and 3. So all we need to remember is that the smaller the number, the higher it goes up. The uh, bigger the base, the flatter the graph, log graph is. Key things though, log base any number of 1 is equal to 0. All right. Vertical asymptote on the y-axis, so no, you cannot work out the log of a negative number, which means the domain is R plus, log base of zero is undefined. The range of the log, however, is R. All right. So if we want to just do a quick sketch of this log graph here, plus one shifts it back one unit, minus one shifts it down one unit. So straight away, I know that vertical asymptote is back one unit. All right. um, so even if we do that on here, the vertical asymptote now is at x equal to negative 1. We'd normally go through the point 0, 1, or it goes across and down. So now it's actually going to go through there at 0, negative 1. And so our graph looks a little bit like that. Yeah. So that point there that we normally have, okay, it's been shifted across one unit, down one unit. So it's now down over here. The asymptotes have been moved to the left, okay? Marking the vertical asymptotes and the intercepts. So what are, well, we need to find the y-intercept and the x-intercept. So we've marked the y-intercept already, but to confirm it, if x is equal to 0, y is equal to log base 2 of 1 minus 1. Log base 2 of 1 is equal to 0. So we get the point 0, negative 1, which is what we suspected. To find my x-intercept, put 0 equal to log base 2 of 1 minus 1. Take the 1 across. Log base 2. Oops, there should be an x in there. Um, so now let's transform this base of 2 to the power of 1 is equal to the x value and therefore we get x is equal to 2. So if I'd done the scale right, that would have been the point zero two. All right. So whenever we work with our log functions or exponential functions, we use this step a hell of a lot. Okay, getting from my log form into my index form, okay? That step there we use a real lot. A little bit more graph sketching. Uh, sketch the graph of f of x minus three, natural log of two, one minus x. So let's rewrite this straight. Negative three, log base two of, let's take the negative sign out the front and make it x minus one. Let's just see if the inside's still equal. Negative x, plus 1, which is negative x plus 1. So it's the same thing, but doing it this way, don't forget the plus 2, but doing it this way, we can see we're two units up, one unit right, oops, I shouldn't do it like that way, one unit right, reflection, that's about y-axis, and reflect about the x-axis, yeah? The 3 is our dilation factor, which just makes it a bit fatter and skinnier. So first things first, let's put our asymptote in. So the whole graph has moved to the right one unit. So let's put that over here. My x is equal to 1. Now my standard graph looks like that. If I reflect about the x-axis, it's going to go that way. And then I'm going to reflect about the y-axis, so my graph looks a little bit like that. 
okay, which kind of fits, put an asymptote in here, and it sort of fits in over here with what we've got, all right. I had to shift the whole graph up two units, so instead of being on the um, horizontal axis, that's not the best scale, instead of being on the horizontal axis, we've moved up two units to there, um, which means my graph is just going to look a bit like something like that. We've got our asymptote. Let's check our x and y intercepts. All right, so x intercept, we'll put y equal to zero. So I get zero is equal to negative three log base two. Now I might as well just write it in the way it's been written, plus two. So if I take negative 2 across, divide by negative 3, so I'm going to get minus 2 over negative 3 is equal to log base 2 of 1 minus x. To get rid of the log expression, there's my base 2. 2 to the power of 2 thirds is equal to 1 minus x. Take x over, so I take the x across and the 2 on 2 back, so x will be equal to 1 minus 2 to the power of two thirds. Yeah. So that in itself, two to the power of um, zero is one, so two to the two thirds is bigger than one. So one minus that is a negative number, so that seems reasonable. So that point there, uh, sorry, let's put this, it's gonna be one minus two to the two thirds, zero. The what? the y-intercept, the y-intercept, let's just put x equal to 0, I get f of 0 equals 2 minus 3 log base 2 of 1 minus 0. Log base 2 of 1 is 0, so I just get equal to 2, which seems reasonable, 0, 2. Okay, so the reflections and dilations and that that we've done seem to fit okay. Now that whole relationship 